This is my testimony from there to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Sons and daughters, bought with blood and washed in water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. Our God will finish what He started. Yes, our God will finish what He started. Let me hear you say this morning. This is my testimony from dead to life. His grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Yeah. All right, Glory Day, I want to invite you to just lift up your voice and make this declaration with us this morning. Sing it out and say, if I'm not dead, then you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, then you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, then you're not done. testimony from dead to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony oh I'm alive this is my testimony from dead to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony.
when darkness tries to hide trembles at his voice trembles at his voice how great is our God sing with me how great is our God all will sing how God, this morning, we thank you for another day of life. We thank you for the opportunity to just be in the house of the Lord, Father. There's no greater place, Father, where we can receive your peace, receive everything that you have in store for us, God. This morning, we come to sing your praises, to lift your name, Father, but we also ask you to prepare our hearts to receive the word that you have in store for us, God. We pray for this nation. We pray for Every single person that has walked into this room, God, and we don't know their needs, the petitions of their heart, but the Father, the God that we serve can see you right through the most profound, knows every need, knows every prayer that has been prayed. So, Father, we ask you to prepare our hearts for this word that we're about to receive. Let it be a blessing for us to not only hear, but to apply to our daily lives. We ask this in your great and mighty name.
Good morning again, brothers and sisters. Greetings from our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May the love of Christ fill your life and strengthen you through his word and truth. Today I have the privilege of sharing the word of God with you. The focus of the message is highlighting the importance of understanding the God that we serve. It is the beginning of the series related to the creed, the Apostles' Creed, where we will dig deeper into several important aspects, persons, and doctrines. We'll be answering questions like, why, what is a creed? Why is the purpose of the creed? And why is the Apostles' Creed punctuated the way it is? We know of the church, the church, we have three creeds. We have the Apostles, the Nicene, and the Athanasian Creed. The Apostles' Creed has the basic teachings of the church. The Nicene Creed has intention is to reveal the two natures of Jesus, fully God and fully man. The Athanasian Creed takes a very distinctive teaching on the Trinity. The purpose of the creed, again, is to preserve Christian teaching, to promote Christian belief, and to defend against the heresy. I would like to start this morning with a quick personal story. And this is a story of my redemption, how God found me. I don't have, again, a recollection of the understanding of the Godhead until I was about 23 years old. When my wife Perla introduced me to the Lutheran church, there was where I finally understood God and the Trinity. It was one evening I was invited by Pastor Mark Jenkins uh, to a Bible study. But as God works his miracles, I was the only one that showed up. No one else showed up that night, just me. At that point, Pastor Mark followed the scripture promise that says in Matthew 18, 20, For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. This happened more than 22 years ago, so you can guess my age at this point. And I can say that during that meeting, planned by God, he found me. That day, I understood the function of the triune God, how the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit worked in my life to give me the faith that I have carried ever since. Today, I am standing here and would like to share with you the importance of that faith and the evidence-based understanding in our life and in our prayer. There's quite a bit of confusion when, we, when people say God. The question is, is the God of the Trinity, the God, the triune God, the same God as the Quran, Allah, or Buddha? And I can tell you it's absolutely not. Who is the true God? The Bible teaches that there is the triune God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, three persons revealed to us but still one God. God the Father, the Creator, God the Son, the Redeemer, and God the Holy Spirit, the Sanctifier. In Matthew 28, 18, the Bible reminds us and says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So we can see the Trinity revealed right there. But in Deuteronomy 3, 4, we are reminded that we have one God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Still remains one God revealed in three persons. Today, the word of God that I will be sharing with you touches on the Trinity and a deeper understanding of the Trinity that I hope can help you help others live life with Jesus. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today with grateful hearts. 
Please enable us to submit our will to you as our Savior Jesus Christ did in the cross for our sake. We are grateful for the work of the Holy Spirit who guided us to Jesus Christ and who is with us every step of the way, guiding us in our journey. May today's word inspire us to understand you better and believe your, you wholeheartedly so we can live our mission and calling, helping more people live life with Jesus every day. Amen. You might be wondering why it's important to understand the God that we serve. In Hosea 4, 6, we are reminded of the following. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. I reject you from being a priest to me. So therefore, brothers and sisters, it is, it is essential to understand our faith. As I explained my experience before, I had no knowledge or cognitive recollection of who God was before I was 23. I knew that I went to church occasionally, especially during the Holy Week. We did not eat meat on Friday, Good Friday, and there were a lot of parties on Saturday night, as we call it, Saturday of Glory. There, all the non-practicing believers will party hard on Saturday night. But that's all I knew. So I encourage you to seek knowledge, seek understanding and a more profound relationship with our Creator. Don't stay on the surface, living with the minimum essential. Be inspired to dig deeper and learn so you can teach others. Now let us explore or understand how God organizes the three persons in terms of authority level. So when we start with the Father, he is supreme in authority among the persons of the Godhead. His responsibility is to devise the purposes and plans that take place through all creation and redemption. Now when we speak about Jesus, he subjected himself under the Father's authority and his most profound desire is to do the Father's will. We must remember that Jesus is fully God and he takes his lead from the Father and seeks to glorify him in all he does. These we can gather it from the word of God in John 8, 28 to 29. So Jesus said to them, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, and that I do nothing on my own authority, but speak just as the Father taught me. And He who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to Him. Now when we speak about the Holy Spirit, He seeks to glorify the Son as the Son sought to glorify the Father in all he did. The ultimate result is the glorification of the Father. We can find biblical reference of these in John 16, 14, where it says, He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Now let us explore the functions in the Godhead when it comes to the plan of redemption. God told Adam and Eve, if you eat of the fruit, you will die. Now, Adam and Eve disobeyed God. And either God was going to be a liar or he had to follow through with his punishment. But instead of destroying them, he gives them hope in the Savior in Genesis 3.15. The rest of the Old Testament is about the promise of the Messiah to come to be the world's Savior. God the Father created the plan that will take place through the work of Jesus. He planned for Jesus to have the highest place of exaltation. The Father also chose Jesus before the world was created. Jesus was part of the plan of redemption from the beginning of time. 
Remember that Jesus' mission was to seek and to save the lost and give his life as a ransom for all people. Just as sin entered the world through Adam and spread to all people, so by one man's obedience, Jesus' obedience, the many will be made righteous. He also chose Jesus to be the one to die for the world and be our Savior, redeeming us from our sins. Jesus now emphasizes continually that he came into the world to fulfill his Father's will. Jesus, for his part, became fully obedient to the Father. In many parts of the Bible, he tells us that he did not come of his own doing, but due to the Father's initiative. It is true that Jesus was in fully agreement with the Father's will. This is evident in Jesus' baptism and transfiguration. Jesus' role was to become incarnated to take our sin and give his life as a, as a substitute sacrifice for us. We are reminded of these in Philippians 2, 6 to 8. Who though was in form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Now let's explore the function of the Holy Spirit. And as you might be aware, there were many prophets that were found in the Old Testament that came full of the Holy Spirit, foretelling about the Son. And we're reminded by that in Isaiah 11, 2, what it says, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and and the fear of the Lord. The Holy Spirit also worked in the Son so that the Messiah was able to accomplish all the works and perform all the miracles he did as the Father directed him. Jesus was always empowered by the Holy Spirit. After Jesus completed all the work in the cross, the Holy Spirit raised him from the dead, as it says in Romans 8.11, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Also the Holy Spirit empowered the disciples on the day of Pentecost. There Peter declares in his sermon that day that the Holy Spirit's coming happened because he was ultimately sent by the Son. As the Holy Spirit blesses believers, it empowers them for the proclamation of the gospel to regenerate unbelievers, to baptize them into the body of Christ, and to do the good works that all who trust in Jesus, to make them like their Savior. In 2 Corinthians 3.18, And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. So brothers and sisters, as we have explored both the nature and function of the Trinity, we must not forget that there is not, this is not creating separation. 
It is very human to see the distinction and believe that there is not harmony in this approach. God is holy, and there is perfection in unity as each person of the Godhead works to pour complete love and grace on us. There is no jealousy or bitterness. The Father never considers himself better than the Son or the Holy Spirit. This is important to understand as authority is clearly defined. Now, as we can read in Scripture, we also realize that the Father has exalted the Son and Jesus has been given the primary spotlight in the history of creation and redemption. Jesus never gets upset to be under the authority of the Father as we read the evidence. Jesus' entire ministry written in scriptures is concerned with doing the will of the Father. This is done with joy and delight. And the Holy Spirit delights in revealing, honoring, and glorifying the Son. The Trinity presents us with the truth that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as fully equal in their essence, which is one. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit each carries out a distinctive role and does so within an eternal relationship and structure of authority and submission. We see it clearly revealed to us in the gospel that according to Matthew 3, 13 through 17, when Jesus was being baptized, then Jesus came to Galilee, to the Jordan, to John, to be baptized by him. John will have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now, for thus is fitting us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. So we have the Father, we have the Son, and, the, and, we have the, and now, and behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. We see Jesus being baptized. We see the Holy Spirit coming on him. And we see the Father saying, I am well pleased with him. Now, brothers and sisters, how do we pray in an inclusive way, honoring the triune God? My experience with most Christians is that not too many people end their prayer in the name of Jesus. We are reminded very clearly in the Bible, and Jesus said it himself, whatever you ask in my name shall be done. So we have to pray in Jesus' name. Now when I do events in social settings uh, where I'm asked to be uh, the person that prays for the setting uh, and the social activities... I do it always in the name of Jesus, and I don't apologize. You don't need to apologize. This is our triune God who asks us, Jesus asks us to pray in his name, and it shall pass. In Matthew 7, 7 through 8, we're reminded of prayer. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks it will be open. We can make, brothers and sisters, a cognitive assessment during our prayer time. We can be reminded of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and call upon their specific ministries in our life. We can begin with the Father and highlight the importance of submitting all we are 
to him. We can then show gratitude to Jesus for his sacrifice and current protection as our advocate. We can then invoke the Holy Spirit to guide us every step of the way. All of this in the name of Jesus. As I was preparing this sermon, I was sitting in a mall in downtown Boston. I spent most of the day sitting at my computer working and preparing and waiting for my son Nelson Abraham as he participated in a music college summer program. There were thousands and thousands of people surrounding me coming in and out of the mall. One family, though, caught my attention. It was a foreign family, or at least that's what I thought after I heard him speak and I could not understand what they were saying. But what struck me the most was this. Here I am sitting waiting for my son while someone else is teaching him how to improve his bass guitar skills. And I see this father of a one-year-old child taking the time to go letter by letter on the following statement. Every day should feel this good. This baby could not even speak clearly. But instructing and teaching was very important for the father to do. I wonder, when is the last time that I took to teach my son anything? I am so busy dealing with life that I cannot take the time to teach my son something as essential and important as the Trinity. We want our kids to succeed in life. And we teach them many things, including fishing, how to work, finances, and how to play sports. But are we taking the time to show them the way? Are we helping them learn how to live fully alive in God's grace? This is not a guilt trip, brothers and sisters. It is just a reminder. A reminder of who God is. And it is as important for me to know him as it is for everyone in the world. So this is my encouragement this morning. Let's be informed. Let us be inspired to share the true identity of our God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, please remind us of our, your grace daily. That grace that delivered Jesus into the hands of sinners so we can live. Thanks for everything you make us to be. Jesus, I thank you for constantly advocating for us as we navigate through this world full of challenges. Given our imperfection, I ask you, Holy Spirit, to continually remind us of our baptism and the affirmation and reaffirmation of our faith. May this word inspire us daily to remember who you are and teach others the way. Use us daily so more people can live fully alive in God's grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, brothers and sisters, we prepare for the Holy Communion. Please follow the invitations from the ushers and communion assistants. They're here to serve you. If you have any mobility issues and would like to receive communion in your pew, please let an usher know. We'll be happy to bring you communion. Also a reminder that the common cup and gluten-free wafers are available. Let us declare a Christian faith at this time through the Apostles' Creed. And if you stand with me, please. I believe 
in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord Jesus taught us how to pray. Pray with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I invite all the communion assistants to come down, unveil the elements, and prepare for communion. Let us confess our sins. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you recognizing, Lord, that we have sinned, that we fall short from your glory. We pray, Lord, that you bless us, give us strength, and help us, Lord, understand what communion is all about. And it's about forgiveness and you, Jesus, giving your body for us. We pray, Lord, that you hear our prayers as we call on to you for forgiveness as the only one that can do that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the Lord Jesus Christ denied that he was betrayed. He took bread, and after breaking it, he said, this bread is my body that will be given up for you. Do this every time you eat from it in remembrance of me. In the same way, brothers and sisters, after supper, he lifted up the cup and said, This cup is a cup of a new covenant in my blood. Do this every time you drink from it in remembrance of me. Brothers and sisters, because every time you eat from the bread and drink from the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord Jesus Christ until he comes back. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat the body. Separated 
The bridge was far too wide From the far side of the chasm You held me in your sight So you made a way Across the great divide Left behind heaven's throne To build it here inside And there at the cross You paid the debt I owe Broke my chains, freed my soul For the first time I had hope Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life Brought me from the darkness into glorious light You took my place Laid inside my tomb of sin You were buried for three days But then you walked right out again And now death has no sting no end for I have been transformed by the blood of the Lamb thank you Jesus for the blood of life thank you Jesus it has washed me wide thank you Jesus you have saved Brothers and sisters, may the body and the blood of Christ strengthen you, give you peace and assurance of your salvation. May his love and mercy and the conviction that the Holy Spirit can give you may strengthen your mind and may lead you and guide you to help others understand the Lord that you serve better. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, at this time I would like to invite uh, Audrey and it seems like a group of young folks that are going to be uh, right here. 
are going to be traveling soon. The middle school mission trip next week. Come on up. Next Saturday morning at 7 o'clock in the morning, we have a bus that will be uh, meeting out here, 25 of us. We'll jump on a bus and head to Kansas City uh, together, where all week long we'll be serving in all kinds of different uh, ways, from serving in group homes to um, community gardens to um, building um, wheelchair ramps to wh however they send us. Every day we wake up and they said, this is where we're going to send you, and God will bring us uh, to those places at such a time as this. And these are some of our young people. We have a few of them still on vacation, uh, and the adults that are going to be serving throughout the week. And we ask that you pray for us. In fact, we're going to remind you to pray for us. Uh, we all have signed this sending cloth, and we're going to lay this on the altar as a reminder for our congregation here to continue to pray for us as we serve boldly in the name of Jesus. And then each one of these young people and adults will have a strip of this cloth that they will tie onto their backpacks as they go out in the, to the community of Kansas City and serve to remind them that they have this congregation back at home that's praying boldly for them and has sent them out to serve at such a time as this. And so we're going to ask that you pray for us. We especially wanted to thank this morning um, you as a congregation for um, uh, stepping up and helping us for the Move the Bus campaign as well as the Shrimp Boil Committee and the Endowment Committee. Without you, these young people would not be able to jump on that bus next week and say, here I am, Lord, send me. And so we're so thankful for you. And Pastor, would you like to uh, pray, pray Absolutely. blessing? Absolutely. Again, thank you. Thank you, church, for the support and making these happen. Uh, a great way of uh, showing these kids how to be the hands and the feet of Jesus uh, into the world. But and thank you guys for saying, and I'm here, I'm committed to go and work for my summer, and then have fun, a little bit of fun, right, but a lot of work uh, to bless other people. Let us pray at this time, if I ask you, please extend your hands forward as they are, you know, traveling by bus, and uh, it's going to be a quite a, about 18 hour trip, maybe, I don't know how long it is, but uh, let us pray for them, for the safe getting there and returning. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, for the, for the opportunity that you give us to pray. Lord, pray for this uh, Audrey and her group, Lord, of uh, adults and children that are going, Lord, in this trip. I thank you, Father, for the opportunity to serve others, Lord, to be able to show Jesus to other people that uh, may be less fortunate, Lord. And, and I thank, uh, Lord, for your blessings, your touch, uh, the lives that will be transformed, the time of fellowship, the time of worship, uh, as the Holy Spirit does his miracles and convinces the hearts of certain things, Lord, please let these experience bring all of that to everyone that, who participates. Let us be also over here back home, praying for them, encouraging them through our uh, prayer, through our, Lord, our desire of success. And in Jesus' name we pray, Lord, that you be with them every step of the way. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Audrey. And at this time, I start ask the congregation to stand up with me, please. Let us be dismissed at this time. And receive the blessings of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Gloria Day.